All right, welcome to me going over the test review. I'm going to go over it pretty much in the same order that I went over it in the class. <clears throat> so we're going to start at the back, and let's look at the function notation. And what we're doing here is basically, again, when I'm going to give you like several functions. And when you see a number inside um, the parentheses, that's a number that you're going to place inside of the x. Everything else is going to get copied the same. So for example, on number 22, uh, f of x is equal to x squared plus 5, which means I'm going to put the 3 in place of the x, but notice how everything else is, say, copy the same, like the plus 5, and I'm putting that in parentheses. I think that helps to see that you're substituting that. Well, what is 3 squared plus 5? Three squared, plus, 3 squared is 9, and then 9 plus 5 is 14, and that's something you could easily type into the calculator or, you know, figure out on your own. So that <clears throat> should hopefully be an easy answer. Okay, the next one, Let's see here. Um, number 23 is negative 9, but let, let's see why. Because what we're going to do here is we're going to put g of x is equal to 5x minus 4. And then we're going to basically say here, we're going to say g of negative 1 means I'm going to say 5 parentheses negative 4 and put the negative 1 there in place of the x. This goes here in place of the x. So that would give me 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, minus 4 would give me negative 9. So that right there would give me the negative 9. Okay. And again, if you don't have, if you have any questions on this, please make sure to stop by the classroom before the test um, on that day. I had no idea when that little extra thing popped up. Okay, number 24. Uh, that one's pretty easy. All I had to do there was if I use h of x, h of x is equal to 7x. Then I, and I'm saying h of negative 3, I'm saying 7 times negative 3. So that one's pretty easy. That gives me an answer of 21. Again, not sure why that is popping up there. Um, Okay, so let's look at the next one, number 25. And, and again, be careful and make sure you're paying attention. Don't make sure you're reading these questions carefully. The next one, 25, is using the idea of f of negative 5. So again, here, I'm going to put the negative 5 in place of the x, negative 5 squared. Now, if you're typing this in the calculator, you need to make sure you type it in exactly the way this is written right here. If you're not, then you got to remember that when you're saying negative 5 squared, you're saying negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Plus 5 gives me an answer of 30. Okay, then 26 would be uh, 63. All I had to do is 9 times 7. And 27, 5 times negative 4 minus 4 gives me a negative 24. Again, all those should be pretty easy. If you don't understand those, you know, just make sure to let me know. Okay, let's look at 28. 28 is the one where you do those composite functions. Now, notice that the, it says g, parentheses, f, parentheses, x, parentheses, parentheses. Okay, g is on the outside. So what is g equal to? g is equal to 5x, but instead of the x, I'm going to put it parentheses, minus 4. f is inside of g. It's inside the parentheses of g. So that means I need to put f into g. And f is equal to x squared plus 5. Well, now I see parentheses, and I can distribute, and I, then I can combine like terms to get my answer. So I'll let y'all see that for a second. So you can see here, when I g combine those like terms, I will get that answer of 5x squared plus 21, because 25 minus 4 is 21. Okay, I can do something similar for the 29, uh, h of x, let's see if I have this already written, Okay, the final answer is going to be 35x minus 28. But the reason why is because h of x, h is on the outside, so I'm going to put this as 7 parentheses. Instead of the x, I'm going to put parentheses. Now, g is inside, so I'm going to put g in there, which was 5x minus 4, and then all I had to do was multiply, distribute, and that's how I got the 35x minus 28. So, again, hopefully, again, if you don't understand those, make sure you be ready to ask questions about that before the test, preferably on that, that uh, in the morning or whatever. 
Okay, now let's look at, let's go back to the beginning, and let's look at Marcus, who was given $75 for his birthday and is saving uh, $40 every week. Okay, so how much does he have to start off with? That's, that's at week zero. How much does he have to start off with? Well, according to the situation, what he was given was $75. So that's how much he has to start with. And then he's going to save $40 every week. So that means, okay, let's see. If I'm saving every week and I'm doing the same thing, I'm adding. So when I do that, these are the answers that I get. 115, 155, 195, 235, 275. A mapping, all a mapping is, is you say, take this part of the table. Whoops, hold a second. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, take this part of the table, and that's going to be here in the, in the left-hand bubble. Then take this, the right side of the table, and put it into the right bubble. And then make sure you connect the points as they belong to who they belong. So 0 goes with 75, 1 goes with 115, 2 goes with 155, 3 goes with 195, 4 goes with 235, and 5 goes with 275. Uh, mapping should be easy, but you know, I just wanted to make sure you all can kind of see that. So you also see who belongs with who. Okay. Then the function rule. Now how do I do the function rule? My advice is on this, is if you can, think about what you start with. Um, and, and, you know, there, there can be different cases to this, but a good portion of them start off like this. What do you start with? Well, I started with 75. Okay, what's the 40 do, or what do you do next? You added to that amount because you kept increasing. So that was the 40. I added 40. And then you notice it says 40 per week. So that means times, per means times, weeks. And I'm still going to put X for the weeks. And then you need to make sure you understand that the X is for the weeks and the F of X is for the amount saved or the money saved. This is your function rule right here. And that's what you want to make sure you are able to put into the uh, equation. Again, if you have any questions, make sure you feel free to ask. Even send it through to me on Edmodo and hopefully you'll, I'll check it and be able to answer Okay, graphing, I don't think that should be that hard. Uh, if you didn't put this little break here, uh, that's okay. It's not a big deal. But the main point is, can you make sure you have your Xs? Again, when you look at the right uh, table, this right side is what the numbers that should be here. The left side of the table are the numbers that should be here. And then kind of graph accordingly. All right? Um, and then answering the questions. Let, well, let's go through that. Dependent and independent variables. Actually, I'm going to go back to here. Remember, when you're looking at this, your independent is always here. Your dependent is here. So if this stands for the numbers of weeks, my independent variable is the number of weeks. This stands for my dependent variable, money saved, and that's my, that's my dependent variable. And that's something you could add to a, um, a note card, how you would have, like, draw a table, and like make note that independence to the left and dependence on the right. Describe the relationship. Try to be detailed as possible about this. Um, in this case, the relationship, you could say something as simple as the money saved depends on the number of weeks you save. Um, or you could say as, as you, the weeks increase, you save more money. Something along those lines. But I, I want something that helps me like realize what it is. Is this a function? Well, let's look. Are the x's repeating? No, they are not. So yes, this is a function because x does not repeat. What's the domain? The domain is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So you have to list all those numbers like that. Your range is 75, 115, 155, 195, 235, and 275. So the range is all those numbers that are on the right-hand side. Continuous or discrete, my personal opinion, uh, I believe this is discrete because you really are saving at the end of each week, making sure at the end of each week you have $40. You're not saving every second of every day of every minute of the week. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I say it's discrete. Now, number 10, what does f of 5 equals 275 mean? This right here means in five weeks, he will have saved $275. 
And then again, does he have enough for the PS4 on launch day? Number 11, uh, in five weeks, because the launch day is in five weeks, he would have $275. PS4 count costs $399. So no, he does not have enough. Christmas is 10 weeks away. And again, you would have to look at a calendar to figure that out. And Christmas, he would say $475, which would technically be enough to buy the PS4, just the PS4, though. Maybe a game. All right, let's look at the next one. You can kind of saw the answers there, but I'm going to go a little bit further on this. All right, so we've got the bars here. We're giving away some Halloween treats, some candy, candy, candies. Okay, so at the beginning, it says that Mr. Bar, Papa Bar, has 500 pieces of candy. He's giving away four pieces for every kid. But notice, this time I didn't go by one, two, three, four. I went by 10, 20, 40, 60, 80. So you'd have to figure out a way, well, let's see. If I'm taking four every time, I could go, well, 10 times the four, give me 40, and 500 minus 40 is um, 460. And then I would multiply again by 20 times four, that's 80, that gives me 420. And you know, all you're doing there is trying to figure out, am I subtracting, adding what? You started adding, you would have been getting more candy, and that doesn't make sense. As the more kids come to the place, you're going to get more candies. Uh, see, there you go. The mapping, you can see here how we're doing the mapping. Again, just drawing the X's on one, the Y's on the other, and connecting the dots. Now, the function rule becomes a little bit more interesting. On this one, our function rule is that we started out with 500, and then we did what? Well, we're losing candy, so that means you would subtract from the 500, and how much are you subtracting by? Notice that number four is what was in the situation, four pieces for each child. And here I'm saying each means multiply, so four, four, four times x. x is the number of children, f of x is the pieces left. So what's our, and the graph? Let's look at the graph. That's what the graph should look like, something like that. Notice that I started the, high, the bigger number on the top. I didn't start at the bottom. That's very key. Um, now, what's the independent and dependent variables again? Again, here's your independent, here's your dependent. You're independent with the children, and you're dependent with the pieces left. Describe the relationship. As more children come to the door, less pieces are left. Um, or the pieces left is decreasing. And pieces left depends on the number of children that come to the door. All of those would be acceptable responses. Um, is this relation a function? Well, the x's again do not repeat, so yes, it is a function. What's the domain? The domain is 0, 10, 20, 40, 60, 80. The range is 500, 460, 420, 340, 260, 180. Is this relation continuous or discrete? Again, I would say it's discrete because you can't have half a child come to the door. And when will the bars run out of candy? Now that becomes a more interesting question. You have to realize here that when that happens, this f of x, which stands for the piece of candy, has to equal zero. Okay, that's gonna get corrected in a second. I kind of messed up there. There we go. So you're saying that's equal to zero, and now you have to solve. Now what I decided to do was move the 4x, because that's a minus, to the other side. And when I do that, move it to the other side of this equal sign, it becomes a positive 4x, because I'm adding 4x to both sides. And that gives me 4x is equal to 500. And then to solve that, that's simply just divide by 4 to find out when there's 125 kids come, I will be complete, or the bars will be completely out of candy. And there you go. That's it for the review. Again, if you do have any questions, feel free to look at it. Look at your quiz, look at some of your old worksheets, and then see if you do still have any questions. Thank you very much. I do apologize that this one was a little bit longer, but hopefully it'll help you do better on the test.